econometric texts on panel data analysis typically focus on two different approaches for modeling the unobserved effect. One is the random effects model where the unobserved effect or the effect that we use for dealing with unobserved heterogeneity is put into the random part of the model. Then we have the fixed effects approach where the unobserved effect is modeled as in the fixed part of the model. But there is also a third approach called the correlated random effects approach that in a way unifies these two approaches. So typically we have the question of which technique of these two we model and uh, we apply and the random effects and the fixed effects approach both have strengths and weaknesses. The, the fixed effects approach can has the weakness that it cannot include variables that are constant within clusters. So it only models within effects but you can't model between effects or contextual effects using this approach because it eliminates all between cluster variation. As another disadvantage it is inefficient when the random effects assumption holds. So the idea here was that when the random effects assumption holds then the between effect and the within effect are the same and we get more precise estimate of the within effect by using the, the between effect to, to help in estimation. In fixed effects approach you eliminate any between effects and uh, therefore you lose efficiency compared to the GLS random effects approach. As an advantage this fixed effects approach is consistent even when the random effects assumption is, does not hold. Let's go on to the random effects model. So the GLS random effects approach can include variables as an advantage variables that vary only between clusters. So you can model between effects and you can model contextual effects. This is efficient compared to the GLS fixed effects when the random effects assumption holds but it's inconsistent and biased if the random effects assumption doesn't hold. In practice we quite often uh, use the Hausmann test to compare these two modeling approaches and then pick the random effects approach if the Hausmann test is not rejected. If the Hausmann test rejects the null hypothesis then we pick the GLS fixed effects approach. What if we want to model the effects of level two variables but we have good reasons to believe that the random effect assumption doesn't hold. So what do we do because we can uh, if we just choose from between these two we have the, G the GLS random effects which is inconsistent under this scenario and we have the GLS fixed effects approach which can't model variables that are constant within clusters or level two variables. So what do we do? Fortunately there is the third approach called correlated random effects model and the idea of the correlated random effects model is that we take this random effects model so we model the unobserved heterogeneity in the random part and we add cluster means of all level one predictors to the model and that allows us to have level two predictors which of course equal their cluster means as, as, pred as predictors in the model. So what's the advantage of this model and what kind of effects the model produces. Let's do another comparison. This is from our article here and in the random effects model we have the fixed part containing the regression coefficients and the random part that contains uh, the variation that the model doesn't explain including the unobserved term. Then we have the, uh, the fixed effects model where the, the unobserved term is modeled as a specific fixed effect for which we estimate a value for each case and then we have this normal error term in a regression analysis. In the correlated random effects model we have fixed part and random part as well. So we retain the random part here from the random effects model but we add the cluster means to the, um, the fixed part and depending on whether we cluster mean center the first vari the, the original variable this cluster mean gives either the contextual effect or the between effect. So, so why does this not require the unobserved term to be uncorrelated with the predictors? The reason is that 
if we add this x bar or mean of x here as predictor the cluster mean then that including that predictor in the model will account for any level 2 effect that the unobserved term would have. So uh, if x is correlated with u then adding x bar as a control will make u and x uh, conditionally independent from one another. So uh, how that can be proven but I will not go through the proof here. The point here is that this uh, CRE correlated random effects model will always give you the within effect for, for the x and it will give you the same estimate and the fixed effects model and this x bar or cluster mean will give you the contextual effect or the between effect. We provide an example in our article in, in this table 4 and uh, we can see here that we have these two fixed effects approaches. We have OLS regression with dummies and we have a GLS fixed effects approach where we eliminate the, uh, the fixed effect by cluster means entering the data within the GLS procedure. So these are fixed effects model. We only estimate the within effect and, and no other effects. <clears throat> then we have a variable z that is only varies between uh, level 2 units. So x varies within levels, z varies between levels. And then we have x bar, the mean cluster mean of x. We have cluster mean centered x and grand mean centered x. And then we can compare that regardless of how we apply the cluster means, it, we can use it in OLS regression, we can use it in GLS random effects model, we can use it in maximum likelihood estimated random effects model, we can use it in maximum likelihood estimated random effects model with uh, cluster mean centered predictors, we always get the same within effect. So we get the same 0.51 effect of all these approaches. So um, which one of these approaches should we then use? Well, uh, typically if an estimation technique produces you more information, then uh, it's more useful than a technique that produces you less information. So uh, here these fixed effects approaches eliminate all the contextual effects all, uh, and all the between effects, these techniques estimate the within effect or the between effect depending on whether we mean center the, the x predictor. So this is a, a between effect here and all these are within effects. They are the same value regardless of how we estimate the model. And we can also use the z, the level 2 predictor. So this is a the CRE correlated random effects model produced is the same within effect as the fixed effects approach but it allows you to also model level 2 predictors here z which the fixed effects approaches don't allow you to do and it provides you information about the contextual effect here or the between effect if that happens to be of interest. These standard errors also should be the same except that these are cluster robust standard errors which differ because they are because of how they are calculated. They depend on the residuals and uh, the residuals in these different models are not the same. But these standard errors will nevertheless be consistent so in large samples they should generally converge. So these techniques can produce the same results so uh, but GR CRE produces more results and can be applied in scenarios for FE can't so uh, that seems a preferable alternative at least to me. So let's take a summary of, of these approaches or, or the correlated random effects approach. So uh, the advantages of correlated random effects is that it doesn't do the random effects assumption that the unobserved term is uncorrelated with all the predictors. Another advantage is that it estimates the within effect consistently the same way as the fixed effects estimation approach or modeling approach does and it can accommodate level 2 variables. So whereas fixed effects models can't have any variables that don't vary within levels then uh, this correlated random effects can. And it provides an estimate of the contextual effect or the between effect. The contextual effect is probably in, in more commonly more useful than the between effect. But there's, there's one disadvantage in correlated random effects model 
and the, the disadvantage is that it is less efficient than random effects models if the random effects assumption holds. The correlated random effects model is sometimes also referred to as the Mandelak procedure, the hybrid approach or the within between model. So this is uh, the, the terminology for this modeling approach is not as standardized as for the GLS within uh, GLS fixed effects and GLS random effects model but you can uh, encounter this model uh, under all these different terms in the literature.